Okay, great. So now we're going to talk a little bit about malicious motivations and future emerging threats. Future emerging threats is one of my favorites. So let's get some basic background in. Uh, motivation in the, in the community. We're going to talk about Mises. Basically, uh, it's a play off the old FBI, FBI counterintelligence term, MICE, which was for why do people betray their country? It's money, ideology, compromise, or ego. Uh, in this case, we're going to expand it into uh, Mises. So people that do bad things on the net, their motivations include, of course, money, pretty obvious, ego, I can, I, can, I can break this system. Entertainment, uh, that used to be a hot one, then it went away for quite a while, and now it's actually coming back. Cause, I'm going to talk a bit about cause in a bit. And entrance to a social group, I want to, I want to join this hacking group, how do I do it? And status, uh, spells out Mises. So we're going to just take a really quick run through each of these. Money, of course, no news to anybody, by far the most common motivator for, for black hats. It used not to be many, many years ago, back when I was haunting the ARPANET and, hunt, and haunting the early days of the internet. Individuals motivated money still often are found mostly within groups that share this motivation. Uh, and there are a lot of emergence of currencies in use in the black market, stolen credit cards, stolen bank accounts, root ownership of compromised machines. Uh, I've got this fabulous exploit, I'll trade it for whatever. Uh, virtual assets like in, in China, QQ coins, real popular. And of course, secret data seems to be the latest one. Uh, also money, money. Uh, if you're a social psychologist or an anthropologist, you know that money has a powerful effect on social structure, on social relations. It really changes a lot of the relationships between people in terms of power and friendship and things. Um, and it also fundamentally is changing many elements within the hacking community, just as it would as any other kind of community. It's also acting as a force to attract individuals from outside that traditional hacking community. Uh, like uh, Russian mob, more traditional criminal elements who are basically going, why should I risk my neck when I can just basically twist this hacker's arm and basically make a lot of money? Um, it's interesting too with uh, the group I talked about earlier, Muzzafucker. They were part of the, the study that we did with the economy. They are now a legitimized group within the Russian community. In fact, they sponsor the Russian ballet. Their logo is branded on some Russian products. Right. And money basically is acting as a social object for these sort of outsiders who are not hackers for power and prestige inside the hacking community that were formerly just wasn't available to them. All right. Ego. Derived from the satisfaction that comes from uh, overcoming technical obstacles, creating elegant code that's innovative. Idea of uh, sort of mastery over the machine, getting to do what you want in spite of numerous security obstacles. Uh, the community at large shares this common, very powerful motivation. You don't have to be white hat, black hat, gray hat, whatever. This sort of basically motivates everybody. And this core motivation is still present today as it was years back and remains a strong social motivation within a hacking community. Entertainment. This motivation arises from the consequences of an exploit, uh, getting a device to do something unusual or novel, uh, like bluejacking uh, devices, getting them to call porn lines, that's kind of fun. Originally an uncommon motivation, this entertainment thing. I remember in the old days I did punch cards, and so I, had, I wrote a little routine of the card reader, and the people would like put their punch cards in the deck, and they'd push the button, and it was like, shuffle them across about eight bins. I was so excited, and I would watch their face going, my cards, what happened to them? So anyway, it used to be uncommon, but it's, it's actually gaining momentum coming back. Part of that's due to the infusion of less technical individuals into the digital space. There are more suckers to play with and have fun with, and sort of the expanded social environment in the digital space. So entertainment's making a comeback. Cause, a rapidly evolving motivation in the hacking community. Most common, hacktivism, the use of the internet to promote a particular political, scientific, or social cause. Uh, original seed came from way, way back in the early days of the, of the net. We're talking about information should be free. Uh, recent examples of hacktivism, we've all seen this stuff. Da, 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 2009, 2009 and 10, Australian government websites, WikiLeaks, etc. So, cause is a big one. 
And there have been a significant increase in the number of cause motivated hacks over the past few years. The seriousness and the consequences of these cause motivated attacks, uh, attacks have, have grown significantly. And I want you to remember one thing, the phrase civilian cyber warrior, because we're going to come back to that a little later, because it's the one thing that sort of scares the crap out of me. So anyway, entrance to a social group. Hacking groups tend to be status homogenous in nature. That is, there may be a leader, but there are other people in the group, and for the most part, their skills, uh, skill levels are similar, even if they're in their different sort of uh, areas of expertise. Um, there implies a certain level of expertise necessary if you want to get into this group. You can't just say, hey, hi, I'd like to join your 2600 group. I'm here. Elegant code exploits are one method for gaining acceptance into the group. Uh, we're seeing more of this motivation given shifts in traditional society's perspective on hacking and geeks. Geeks used to be not cool. We used to be basically at the bottom of the social pecking order. Being a geek is now pretty cool. So actually, that's also changing some things in the community as well. Finally, status, that's our last motivator. Uh, powerful motivation within the hacking community has always been there. Community is, uh, the hacking community is really a meritocracy. Your skill, your expertise, and operating systems, hardware security are used as status characteristics that tell you where you belong both within your group as well as across groups. Your position uh, globally and locally, yep. The decline of the hacking meritocracy. This is something that's been happening recently. Non-trivial decreases in basing status based on skills and expertise. Probably due to money being injected into the social system. It's really starting to break this down. Uh, kind of sad to see this, but I think that's really what's happening. You don't need high skill if you can buy the resource to do it. Exactly, right. Okay, near-term emerging threats. Civilian cyber warrior, uh, hacking groups, aggregating different forms. I, I don't know if we're going to go through a list or not. I think we are. Let's see. Yeah, an example. Civilian cyber warrior. Uh, traditional forms of, of aggression. This takes about a two-minute story. Let's say uh, you're a citizen of country A, and country B did something that really pissed you off back in the old days before the net. What would you do? Well, I don't know. You might write a letter to the president of country B and say, you're a bad country. You know, don't do that. Stop. Do you think that helped? Nah, not really. So, well, okay, so maybe you and some of your friends will go down to the consulate or embassy, kind of country B's embassy, and protest up and down. What does that get you? Arrested. That didn't work too well. Hmm. Okay, well, you know what? I'm really determined. I'm going to take all my money out of the bank. I'm going to fly to country B. We have five minutes? Holy crap. Okay. Uh, and, um, uh, and then uh, we're going to blow something up. And either go to jail, blow yourself up, you know, it doesn't work too well. So this is not a very good ending. So basically, um, there are a lot of personal costs, legal consequences. But what I want you to do is, the one thing I want you to remember is, uh, if, if nothing else, is that for the first time really in history, the social psychological uh, significance of the event that an individual can cost effectively attack a nation state. The probability of, of serious damage, that's amazing. That's really changing the power structure between sort of individuals. And that's, that's, that's uh, really an amazing thing, and it's going to have a continued effect. Uh, I've been harping on this for uh, a number of years, trying to wake people up, saying, look out, it's coming. So Russia, Estonia, and the Turkish hacks from a couple of years ago with the Danish cartoons, lots and lots of different examples in popular media over the last few years. Even now, with uh, some of the revolutions that have taken place in Middle Eastern countries, some of that's been organized by Twitter, or yep. just using Facebook as different means to get people together in a, yep. in a single place. It's incredibly powerful. Hey, actually, it turns out we're not that far behind because we're almost done. Uh, Tom and I are doing a, this really sort of fabulous study, sort of uh, a cy civilian cyber warrior study, and it's underway right now. What we're trying to do is produce some uh, statistical models, uh, basically that look at willingness to act to commit acts of cyber terror against another country, willingness to commit acts of cyber terror against their own country, willingness to commit physical acts of terror against another country, willingness to attack the physical terror against their own country. So, some pretty really cool, interesting uh, variables.
Are they driven by the same thing? Is the person who's going to light a bomb in a place going to be just as willing to say, send out some spam email if they have the technical capacity to do so? What's the relationship between those? So we have a bunch of sort of independent variables, such as the level of technical skill the person has, uh, hours per week using a computer, prior minus malicious acts using a computer, like piracy, things like that, level of nationalism, level of sort of eth national ethnocentrism, country of origin, are they uh, the US, are they a foreign student, uh, demographics. Uh, and just to give you an idea, Here's our scenario-based uh, uh, question. Imagine the country of Bulgaria has recently promoted national policies and taken physical actions that have had negative consequences to the country that you most associate as your home country or homeland. These policies and actions have also resulted in significant hardships for the country in your home country. What actions do you think would be appropriate for you to take against Bulgaria given their policies and physical actions against your home country? You may choose as many actions as you think the situation warrants. In this scenario, you can assume that you have the necessary skills to carry out any of the following actions below. And they go all the way from um, do nothing down to um, travel to Bulgaria, damage a government building with an explosive device. And you can sort of see this is kind of comforting. Most of the people, yeah, they're up in here. That's sort of what you'd expect. What's not quite so comforting is the folks that are down here. These are the ones you got to worry about. So uh, we also have another one. Uh, this is our cyber terror uh, set of questions. Uh, very similar, aside from physical activity, what online activities do you think would be appropriate for you to take against the Gary, given your policies and physical actions against your whole country? Etc. And once again, you can sort of see the pattern. Most people fairly benign, and then you got the folks down here you have to worry about. And we're just getting preliminary data now. We're, we're gathering more data, and we're just creating some preliminary statistical models. We're, we're working first on uh, attacking your own homeland because that seems to be it's not only the most interesting, but it seems to be the hottest topic now. Take your own citizens basically basically going after their own uh, government. So um, that's I think. Ah, summary. Understanding the nature of the relationship between people and technology may help you predict where the next threat vectors are going to emerge. Elements of the hacking community social structure are still there in different form and distribution from the old days. The motivations of the hacking community uh, are still there, but their shape, form, and consequences have changed often dramatically. Constructing scenarios of emerging threats can help you anticipate in a fast evolutionary threat environment. That is, uh, basically, you're always defending against stuff all the time. But if you can figure out what the future scenarios might be, what's going to come at you, you have a much better chance of getting a step up before they get you. And if anyone here is from universities and they're interested in participating in a study for like a cross-national study, we want to talk to you guys. So anyway, that's it.